Welcome to Anime Adventures. I'm Elise Bowman, the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT, and this is the show where I bring you conversations with anime voice actors. And right now, I am excited to be joined by two of those actors, John Swayze and Mike Vance. Hey, how are you guys? Doing great. Good. Well, this is exciting. This is actually my first online interview during this time of social distancing because, you know, I usually do these in person. So what I want to do is jump straight into the intros and then we'll have a nice little chat. And of course, John, this is my first repeat interview. You've been on the show before. And so those of you who watch this show, you know, John has so many amazing characters like Hohenheim in Full Metal Alchemist. He's the voice of Crocodile in One Piece. He's all for one in My Hero Academia and gosh, so many other great characters. You have founded two anime conventions, Anime Dallas and Anime Houston. Hopefully we'll be able to get back to the convention world. And John is also an ADR director at Sentai Filmworks and has done so many other things in the anime world and in the entertainment world and of course Mike is also an anime voice actor he's done voices like Hunter in Full Metal Panic he's done Shindo in Just Because and also Kuroji in Air Gear and a lot of other fun characters and I love his stand-up background he has been on national shows like Comedy Central, A&E, Showtime he's been the headline act in over 30 states and five countries and he is a writer director historian i mean the bios of these two guys are just crazy so we are going to talk about those things we're going to talk anime and we are going to talk about a very exciting children's project that they have upcoming so all of that coming up Welcome back to the show. Mike, welcome to the show for the first time. It is so Thank good you. to have both of you. Indeed. Thank you so much for having us, Elise. Yeah, and what I want to start with is you guys, in addition to your awesome work history, you also have quite a history together, and you go way back. So why don't you give me just a little bullet point history of how you met and what brought you to the point of your anime work? And John, why don't you start? Well, uh, we we started, um, well, we met, I should say, uh, in Houston back in 1987 at the Comedy Workshop. Mm -hmm. It was a very famous uh, comedy club here in Houston, Texas, nationally famous. And um, Mike was doing a lot of stand-up. I was more on the cabaret side, meaning I was doing the sketch comedy and the improvisation. And, uh, uh, you know, we'd always, uh, a lot of comics would come and hang out at the Comedy Workshop because they had like dollar beers for if you were an entertainer. So it was a, just by necessity, it was a place to hang out. But um, uh, one of the things that I think really solidified us, our, our friendship and, and future partnership and whatever we were doing was uh, I brought, I had a lab, black lab named Boo. And uh, I brought her up to uh, the club one night and Mike um, convinced me in, in probably the first of, of many, many convincing John, you should go do this. Like, okay. You know? <laughs> and I, uh, he convinced me to let the dog out into the audience while this comic was on stage. And I did. And uh, much to the chagrin of the comic, the club owner, um, but much more to the delight of me, Mike, and the audience. So yes. it was it was worth it, you know. The other but ever comic, since then. The other comics thought it was absolutely hysterical. So, yeah. uh, except for the one on stage. Of course. Yeah which we didn't care. He wasn't very funny anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so so that's how that's how we met. Wow. You know. And you've also tell me about how it got you to anime cuz I think you anim you auditioned for anime at about the same time, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And w tell me how that came about, Mike. We had a uh, a band that was mm -hmm. called the PC Cowboys, politically correct country and western music. And we were working all over Southeast Texas and sometimes out of Southeast Texas. And um, we ended up working a gig down in Texas City and met this guy, Jason Lee, that was uh, goes by Jason C. Lee, as a matter of fact, but uh, he was doing anime and was talking to us and said, you know, you guys should be trying out for this. And so we went and auditioned, not having the slightest idea of what we were auditioning for. 
yeah. um, <laughs> got in there on a weekend when they weren't recording. They were doing almost an open call. You had to be, you know, recommended by somebody. And uh, we got in there and they threw you in the deep end of the pool and uh, ran some uh, some video and, and had you voice it. And just to see how, number one, that you could read, <laughs> that you could remotely get in the same rhythm as the, the character that was on the screen. And uh, that's how we both got into it. And we've both been doing it now for a long time. Yeah. Wow. Well, However many time. years that is, yes. I Longer like that. Than many of the, longer than many of the fans age. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll not mention that. Yeah. I like what you said. They wanted to just see if you could read. I feel like that's come up for me before. Like, can you read? We also do, can do a lot of character work. And, mm. you know, so yeah. we would we would do all kinds of different characters. You know, Soldier B, Pedestrian A, you know, all these little one-offs that, you know, nobody, nobody goes, oh, I love you as Soldier B, you know. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you, you get a... a uh, Chris Patton or a Greg Ayers that's the main character and we're we're 20 other characters in that you know that show mm. I think so. I've played the president of the United States in about four different shows and yeah um, you know defense minister a lot of fathers and yeah. uh, a lot of guys that get shot so oh. my characters don't last long all the time Oh, well, that's okay. We need every role is critical. I mean, they that's do right. say that even supporting roles, it moves the story along. So every single role is important. And so good for you. Yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of where, you know, that's how we got started. And then that's we've been doing it ever since. Here. You guys have a children's project. And John, I know this was your idea. So why don't you tell us how the idea came about? Several years ago, um, I was reading a book to my uh, daughter, my youngest daughter, and I was reading, it was about a, a lion who uh, had really bad breath, and uh, he wouldn't brush his teeth. Okay. And um, I thought, man, this will make a really cool uh, audio audio play. And um, I thought, well, yeah, let's do this. And I was going to do it and then pitch it to the people that wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And that really didn't work out, but what it did do was give me an idea to just, why don't we just do it ourselves? And then I realized that, you know, I'm I'm an actor and I've done some writing, but I'm not a writer. But Mike is a writer. And, you know, so I contacted Mike and I said, dude, I got this idea. So we met for, um, you know, our customary couple of beers and came up with some ideas and really started to flush out the story. And within, you know, a couple of meetings had the story completely done and tweaked and ready to go. And then also as Mike and I continue to meet, we, instead of just like coming up with this one book, we started to think in terms of creating a whole universe of, of books with these characters in Jungle Bird. And um, it's uh, a lot of the, the things, the attitudes and, and whatnot that are in Jungle Bird kind of stem from uh, like things like anime conventions. And that's, you know, the acceptance, diversity, uh, you know, people getting along, people supporting each other, you know, helping each other, and people with a lot of differences and a lot of things that other, you know, the normal world would say, what's wrong with them? You know, well, there's nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong at all. It's just the way they yeah, are. Yeah, Jungleburg is a, it's a community, and yeah. all the characters that live there are animals, but just because it's the jungle, you have animals that you wouldn't find in the jungle that are mm. also there. So it's a little bit of everybody. There's, um, in the first story, there's a Canadian goose and a kangaroo that are in there um, that obviously are not jungle animals, uh, but they're there. They meet the title character who is Zeke, a spider monkey. And all of these characters will come back. So you might have uh, Gretchen, who's the goose, uh, might be the lead in another story down the line. And we want people to get used to the community and get used to all of the characters. We've created a website. We have games that are uh, included in the book and also more games that are included on the website. So the idea is to create something bigger and really the coolest part where it ties back into anime is we have uh, fully acted audiobooks. So it's not just somebody reading the story. Each part is acted out and the people that are acting those out are all anime actors. Yeah. So 
Yeah, yeah, that's really cool too. I think that fans will recognize some of the actors who are acting out the books in the audiobook. John, do you want to tell us about some of the actors involved? Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, first of all, Mike and I are um, yes. some characters. Um, and uh, we have Blake Shepard, who plays Zeke the Spider Monkey, mm -hmm. who is also our illustrator. Uh, oh, uh, he is. Kind of worked out. Okay, yeah, yeah. that worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, uh, Lucy Christian plays mm -hmm. Gretchen the Goose. Uh, we have a young lady in England named Ellie Montgomery, who's a, a YouTuber, and she plays the kangaroo. And then we have uh, Patricia Duran, who's a uh, Houston actor and anime voice yes. actor as well. And she plays uh, Zeke's mother. And uh, then uh, Jay Hickman is yeah. our narrator. Oh, so, perfect. Um, and then, like Mike said, you know, our goal is to use these actors. Well, not only will they come back around, but we're going to introduce new characters, you know. So it's not just going to center on those, that group of actors and that or that group of characters. We're going to diversify. So they may come in just for a couple of lines and then they're out. You know, it just depends how, what, how the story goes, you know, because we're already working on book number two. And, uh, you know, just we're going to see how it flushes out and what characters come back and what new characters appear. That's kind so. of exciting. And I know the first book was your idea. So what's the gist of the first book without giving us too much info? So uh, the first book is basically, it's a monkey, little spider monkey who loves to swing in the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is he keeps swinging into things. Uh -oh. And uh, like the ice cream man or the, the first lady, the mayor's wife, who's a big hippopotamus and her boxes go flying and whatnot. Uh, and his mom suspects that it's maybe something's wrong with his eyesight. So they have to go see the eye doctor. He's a little trepid about it, uh, or a little, you know, upset, doesn't yeah. really want to go. And um, so, uh, but she says it's okay. Well, he goes, makes some new friends like the goose and the kangaroo, and, and then uh, goes to the eye doctor. Everything turns out fine. It's not as bad as an experience as he thought. And, um, now he can see great and, and swing all through the jungle. So it's uh, it's just, you know, it has a, it's kind of a message that, uh, you know, these kids, you know, little kids may be scared about going to the eye doctor. They don't know, but you know, adults are like, that's ah, no big deal. But to them, it is a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal And kids. so, yeah. right, and or the, the stigma, now you gotta wear glasses, you mm -hmm. know? But um, it turns out everything's fine. It's all good. So that's that's what the first book is about. Oh, so, Mike, nice. you can tell, you can tell about the second yeah, book. Yeah, tell us about the second book, Mike. The second one is about a squirrel that's afraid of heights. Uh-oh. And um, obviously the other squirrels are making fun of her. And ultimately a problem comes up and our hero squirrel solves the problem for everybody else while the other squirrels are all trapped up in the trees. She's the one that uh, rescues them from their situation. So. It's not about trying to make her learn to get over her fear. It's about accepting her fear. Oh, that's perfect. I love the message that you guys have in throughout the books and the community. And that's really what you're creating is a community for children, right? Indeed. Absolutely. Well, this Indeed. is really cool because, you know, as we attend these conventions and get questions asked, by people who watch anime, they, they do want to know what anime actors and directors are doing outside of their anime work. And this is a great example of what you both are doing in addition to the other mini hats that you wear. You've created this project and I know it's a project of love, it's your passion project, and it's something really cool that you're doing. And we need to talk about, you've got a special that's going on for a limited time. Mike, do you want to tell us about that? Sure, the, the hard copy books, which we think are very important, are being ordered. And with the pandemic going on, that's taken a little bit of time. Uh, the audiobook, the ebooks, those are ready for download right now. For a limited time, you can buy all of that, everything together. And when the actual hard copy books show up, it will be signed by both John and I, and by Blake Shepard, our illustrator and the voice of Zeke. Wow, that's so cool. And I'll put a link in the description to your website so people can go and find out more. And, Cause I think that's really a special thing that you're offering. Well, hey, this has been so much fun. Do you have any final words that you wanna say or, or, or tell me like, 
for a final thing, what's coming up for either this project or just what's going on? John, I know that you're getting back to the studio and it's such a weird time and it's hard to yeah, project what's uh, going on. Uh, we are getting back into the studio. Things are starting to pick back up. I actually did some recording today. Oh, good. Uh, some remote recording. And, um, it, it, you know, it seems like people are really trying to cautiously, uh, you know, get back into the swing of things and get back to to where this is because you know the the whole thing has obviously put a monkey wrench into a lot of things so well hey thank you both so much for being here and if you're watching with this thank you for being here if you haven't subscribed already i encourage you to and encourage you to be part of my community it's so much fun to be here with you guys and gosh, normally I end with a high five. It's kind of hard to do virtually. <laughs> so we will just end and say bye. Thanks for being here. See you later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.